Stop what you're doing and see if you can tell me what these five microphones have in common. The Rode XDM100, the Blue Sona, the Go XLR mic, the Beacon mic, and the Elgato Wave 3. Well, if you said they're all several hundred dollars and were recommended by YouTubers to new creators under the idea of being budget friendly and the best beginner mic, then you're right. Personally, I don't know what budget friendly means to most YouTubers these days, but to me, I'm thinking 40, 50 bucks, 100 bucks max. And if I'm spending $100 on someone's recommendation, then I want an assurance that three months from now, they're not gonna upload a video saying all the same things about a new microphone that they got sent telling me to buy that one instead because it's better. This is why for the past two years, I have only recommended one microphone, the Samson Q2U. Let me show you why by comparing this microphone to the $300 Rode XDM and the $800 plus setup that I used my Shure SM7B. But first, I bought the Samson with my own money and I'm not paid to do this, so let's do a giveaway as well. Own.tv, the best place to get stream overlays, alerts, sub badges, you name it, has given me dozens of vouchers for their store. These also work alongside their global sales, which means right now you could grab pretty much any any of their overlays for either free or just a few dollars. I'll give them away in the comments. All you have to do to enter is click the link in the description, pick an overlay, sub badge, alert pack, whatever it is you would buy if you won, and then comment hashtag owned giveaway and the name of the pack that you wanna grab. And massive thank you to Owned for sponsoring the video. If you wanna support me, enter the giveaway so I can give back to you guys. Now back to the video. Starting with the basics, the Samson Q2U is a dynamic microphone, not a condenser microphone. I could show you dozens of graphs like this one here. Look, look at the way Just it curves. Just kidding, you don't care about that, do you? No, essentially dynamic microphones are less sensitive than condenser microphones, which means sometimes they need to be closer and might require a bit more gain. But these aren't bad things. You see, dynamic mics are better in untreated or amateur rooms, like home offices, bedrooms, or even bathrooms. Mine's made of wood. I think it's kind of cool, but some people say that's weird. AKA your stream rooms. They're also better at dealing with background noise, like your mom telling you to clean your room or your dad throwing beer cans at you from the other side of the house. One of the reasons the Samsung Q2U is great is because it's a cardioid polar pattern. Do you wanna see the graphs that explain it? No, you don't. So instead, let's just say cardioid means it handles sound right out of the front here and doesn't pick up sound from behind it or well under it. It still gets audio from the sides, as you can see from this and this, but you can tell as soon as I move away from the front, it's picking up a lot less. Not all mics are like this though. One of the most popular mics for streaming that you all know is the Blue Yeti Snowball, which can actually be omnidirectional. So if you look at this graph right here, you can oh, see- Oh look, he's using the same bit again to tell you that it just means that it picks up audio from all around it rather than directly in front of it, okay? I'm sorry, graphs are boring. Look, a few more things to rattle off quickly that are important to you and, well, your wallet. The Samsung Q2U is between 70 to 80 USD most of the time. Sometimes it costs a bit more or less, it goes up and down. So look around a bit and if you need, check the links in the description. They are affiliate links, so if you do use them, they don't cost more, but I do get a small cut from them. I know 80 USD is a little bit pricey, but hear me out, I don't think you'll need to upgrade this mic anytime soon, especially because it's USB and XLR, meaning if you decide to upgrade to an XLR mixer or interface, you can keep using the Samson. So you're not spending loads of cash all at once to upgrade your setup or on unnecessary mics or broken pieces of gear like uh, like I did. For example, you'll see today or not see because it's out of frame that I'm using the Thron Max S6 low profile mic arm for my tests. A mic arm I can confidently recommend, unlike say, the Elgato low profile, which costs a little bit more than the Thron Max, but it sags aggressively on me. And before you say, hey LJ, maybe yours is faulty. Yeah, that's that's what I thought. So I bought it, I bought a second Elgato low profile, and it continues to sag on me there too. So if you want a really good mic arm, I linked the Thron Max in the description as well. So with that said, you've got the basics covered and you've heard what it sounds like. It's time to show you everything. Today we're not using any filters on the microphone. We're plugged right into my PC with the supplied cable, and I've leveled the audio with the Windows settings so that OBS is reaching minus 12 dB. Hello there, I'm currently typing out this onto Discord so that you can also see what it sounds like when I'm using my keyboard without any filters. And now I am really slamming away at the keys as if I was angrily typing out a letter to my mum. And this is me typing out a message as well into Discord while I have a default expander filter in OBS. Listening back to the keyboard test, I know you can still hear it. No microphone is going to be able to cut that out entirely. However, with proper placement, proper leveling, and using expander filters, you can really minimize it. To be honest, even with my Shure SM7B, I can still hear my keyboard as well with everything that it does and for its price. This is what the Samsung Q2U sounds like when I have a fan set to max speed about a meter away. And this is what it sounds like when I have a fan 30 centimeters away on max speed aimed directly into the microphone.
And this is what the Samsung QTU sounds like with a fan pointed directly into the microphone at max speed, but with the OBS noise suppression set to default added. I'm actually ridiculously impressed with the fan test. I know you can still hear it, but the fact that you can't hear any of the buffering sounds when the fan is set to max right up next to it kind of blows me away. And I love that. This is what I sound like 10 centimeters away. This is what I sound like a meter away. This is what I sound like a meter away, but with my gain increased to 90% in my Windows settings. This is what I sound like from a meter away, but with my settings at 90% and with a little bit of noise suppression added by default. I don't know if the distance test really shows anything. You're not going to use this microphone from over a meter away, but to be honest, it still sounded pretty clear when I add a little bit of noise suppression as you heard yourself. But again, you're not going to use it that far. You're going to use it about five, 10 centimeters away. And now I'm going to turn off my visuals and play you three different audio clips. One will be from the Samsung QTU, the other will be from the Rode XDM100, and the other will be from the Shure SM7B. These are all dynamic microphones. However, they're all very different price points. And it's important to mention the Samsung QTU will still be plugged in via USB. The Rode XDM100 will be plugged in via USB-C, and the Shure SM7B will be plugged in via XLR cord, going into a cloud lifter, and then into my Go XLR. And I'm going to make sure that all of the filters, boosting, and handling that happen happens on the Rode XDM software, such as Unify, or on my GoXLR are completely turned off for both of them, so you have a very fair test. This is audio clip one. This is audio clip one. This is audio clip two. This is audio clip two. This is audio clip three. This is audio clip three. So which did you prefer? Audio clip one is the Samsung Q2U, Audio Clip 2 is the Rode XDM, and Audio Clip 3 is the Shure SM7B, which means that you just listen to three different microphones, one being under $100, one being around $200 to $300, and the other being $400 to $800, depending on your setup. So obviously the mic that you should buy is going to be- Just kidding again. Look, I'm not gonna tell you guys which one you should buy. That's called using my bias to influence your purchasing decision to make myself money. So instead, I'm not gonna do that at all. I am gonna use the microphone, tell you about it, show you tests, and I'm even gonna give you alternative options so that you can make up your own mind and then feel confident in your decision-making skills. So there are two other options that I'd like to recommend. And while I haven't used them, they are very similar to the Samsung QTU and I'll link reviews of them by Podcastage, who is kind of my idol down below. These two microphones are the Audio-Technica AT2005 and the AT2100X. Now, if you wanna see more of my budget gear options, click this video right here. And I would love it if you could comment down below how I did with this video and how I can improve. I don't do many tech reviews and I'd love to start doing far more of them because it's a passion of mine. And I'd love to be a voice in the streaming industry that's more fair and less biased about trying to make money off you by showing you the most expensive mics only. I'll see you guys next week. Hopefully I can continue to improve and be better for you all.